that I had been involved with for a long time, seven or eight years, doing yoga. And as I said, I started it because I got that sciatica and I liked stretching. And how I first learned about yoga being a uh, new age thing and a problem, and I understood it came from Hindu, uh, you know, Hindu and, uh, background, but I thought, well, I'm not studying that, I was reading uh, Derek Prince's biography. And Derek Prince, before he was saved, he actually was aiming to be a yogi. You know, the holy men who wear the nappies and have a pet rat and dreadlocks and just a list out uh, and waiting to transcend this life. He was actually wanting to be a yogi, even though he'd been to Cambridge and was, you know, about high degree in philosophy. And he was serving in the army and to have a meaty book to read as an intellectual exercise, he'd taken the Bible. He thought, I'll, get, I'll work through this, not that he was believing. And he had a revelation in his tent in the desert that Jesus was Lord and he received Jesus. And he said he believed he was delivered from the spirit of yoga when he received Jesus as Lord. And I thought to myself, spirit of yoga? Could there be such a thing? And I thought, well, I understand there's that Hindu thing, but I'm not studying that, I'm just doing the stretches. But God kept showing me every single pose gives honour and retells there's thousands and thousands of Hindu gods, many of them animals and so on. But for example, one of the most common sequences of moves that they do in yoga is called salute to the sun, to salute to the sun god. The Bible tells us not to bow down or worship the sun, but you're being led through a worship of the sun god. Now, you might not believe in the sun god, the yoga teacher might not believe in the sun god, but you're both in deception because in the name of yoga, which means to be yoked, and what the aim of yoga is in Hinduism is an exercise it's an activity in trying to come into spiritual oneness with the cosmos to realise and become one with the universe. So there's a lot of breath work, breathing in the pranic energy, as the Hindus call it, what they think is this God energy or God essence. So every pose is giving on it. And it, the spirit, the Satan doesn't care if you believe it or, or know it or realise it or not. He doesn't care if the, the teacher realises it or believes that or not. It's like if you break a road rule, ignorance of the law is no defence against you getting a fine for breaking a road law. It's the same in the spirit realm. Ignorance of what you're involving yourself with is definitely no defence against Satan saying, ha ha, this person comes in the name of yoga as worshiping the sun god, they're opening up their chakras. There's lots of activities and things that people live through in yoga, like at the end they'll often do relaxation, but it's guided meditation where they're trying to guide you to sort of have a, an experience to project yourself like a, you know, a meter above your head to the light. Or they do, while you're actually relaxing and trying to meditate and do these things, they come and they touch the top of your head and you think, what's that about? You come and touch here, you're trying to touch your third eye, your God consciousness to alert you, to touch your crown chakra, or they might touch your chest. They believe in chakras or these energy centers and balls, or they might imagine that you've got a green ball or chakra. They're trying to get you to visualize these chakras and have all of your energy centers. These are totally spiritual things. They don't actually exist. But when you do them and you are open to them, when you sit under them, you're giving honor to them, and it's an open door to any spirit that the devil might want to send along. And it doesn't have to be at that time. It can come down the track until you have a realization of this and repent of it to close that door. So you could get a pain or a sickness in any of those points five years down the track and think, where on earth does this come from? Because it didn't happen at the time that the guru, the yoga teacher who goes and sees a guru at the ashram in India every year and she's going deeper and deeper into demonic things. And I can tell you, John and I have delivered lots of people who've gone deep into yoga for years in ashrams and have been under gurus. And you see often their hands go into it. They can't help it when they're being delivered or having a manifestation. Their hands will often do this lotus position in various postures. Um, or the kundalini spirit in yoga, trying to awaken the snake spirit down the spine. People doing this sort of thing. That needs to be cast out. And you might, because the devil, you've got an open door, the manifestation of the thing that takes advantage of you can, can come years down the track. So you can't trace the steps and figure out what the open point is. So my advice is repent of everything because you might have forgotten stuff. Like when I was newly saved and I was going through lots of repentance prayers, I repented of everything, even things I've never done because you just don't know. But also you don't know what your family might have been involved in and it could have been a transfer from them to you. So it's just, it's just fast rather than questioning. Just repent. It takes up like 10, 30 seconds for some prayers to repent of stuff. It's just faster. Do it. 
because you could be breaking stuff off your children as well, things that have transferred from other people too. So yoga I had to give up. Now, the, I, I've been doing yoga for a long time, so to say I gave it up sounds easy, but when you're part of that, like group every Saturday morning and whatever, you, you're choosing to abandon things. But I wanted my miracle like yesterday, so I thought there are so many other forms of relaxation and stretching and exercise you can do. I can give up yoga easily, no worries at all. So I gave that up. Um, martial arts, Tai Chi. A lot of older people you see do Tai Chi often at the beach or in the park. Tai Chi is highly spiritual for pretty much the same reason as yoga. The reason that they'll often do it outside, in their feet, on the bare earth, if the weather allows, is because they're wanting to literally touch the earth to draw in the energy from the universe.